Hey everybody, it's Brody Dolanik from Brody's Garage. Today is January 9th. This is episode 53. Well, hello everybody and happy new year to all. Um, I'm standing in the garage here at the end of my day. I don't know why I feel the need to come back into the garage just to talk to you. I could be talking from inside the house, but... The kids are asleep, I guess, and so it's probably best. Anyway, I'm once again here in the empty garage with a couple of car parts here and no Chevy 2 Nova. Uh, if I'm being totally honest with you, I'm starting to get a little just discouraged um, or sad, maybe is the better word. My car has not been in the garage for three months. It's been out in Pahrump at my buddy's shop. I'm, first of all, very blessed to have a friend that's being this kind enough to help me out with this project throughout the bodywork. My good friend Al Nakata has um, hosted my car for the past three months in his backyard shed. Um, the reason it went out there is to, of course, get the bodywork finalized, get the primer and paint done. And it was not intended to be out there for this long, but somewhere along the course of the line, I made a last minute decision to go ahead and put a roll cage in the car. So it took two months to get the roll cage from Chris Alston's Chassis Works. I filled out a form, I took measurements, and I ordered a custom vent roll cage kit. Um, it got lost in shipping through no fault of theirs. Um, and I finally got it only to realize that I had made a mismeasurement and the bars that went along the side of the window and the A-pillar were completely not right. My fault. Um, so at that point, I decided to make another decision to order a brand new tubing bender, and I'm going to custom bend this thing myself. I'm going to get a tubing notcher, and I'm going to learn how to Teague weld and all this stuff. Well, it took uh, six weeks to get the uh, tubing bender from JD Squared. So I finally just literally um, today went out there and was able to bend my first piece of pipe. So I'm gonna backtrack here from the beginning of the year and show you the process. It's only a few things that I've gotten accomplished, but it is nonetheless progress in the right direction. And once I get this roll cage done, we can move on to paint. So here's the latest with the roll cage. Oh, before we move on to the roll cage, I wanna tell you about a couple things. Picking up where we left off on the last episode, I did go ahead and poured out my exhaust turbo merges for the wastegates. So I opened up that passageway fully to get to the wastegate. So that's one thing I did. And if you were watching the last episode, I got my stuff back from the powder coater and I was really displeased to find these weld bumps underneath the powder coating. Unfortunately, I didn't catch it in time. I debated about it. Should I just leave it and deal with it, or should I grind them down? I chose to grind them down flat, so I took the uh, Fab 9 housing back to the powder coating to drop it off to get it redone. So anyway, I'm not in a hurry for that right now. That's being done, and now let's go check out what's going on with the roll cage. Well, Happy New Year, and hello, everybody. I'm back at the shop today. It's January 1st. It's cold out here. But despite that, I actually think my year might be off to a good start. I had a little stroke of good luck. What I thought was going to be a terrible mistake, it was. I mismeasured the bars that went from here down along the A pillar and thought I was going to just throw those in the scrap pile or maybe use them as practice welding material. Um, I had a last minute idea to flip them backwards and try them in the back and after some cutting, notching, and fitment, guess what? I actually got those things pretty darn good. I mean, they actually are working out probably better than if I had planned it this way. So I'm pretty happy right now. I got them sort of magnetized and just stuck in there right now. Um, but these are the plates that I made. I used a cardboard template and then I made some trunk plates and welded them to the floor and did some grinding on them because the welds are hideous. But the plates are in, the bars are in, and as you can see, the, the angles are pretty close. A little bit more final fitment. I even tried out my brand new JD Squared tubing notcher for the first time and got a pretty good fitment going on there. A little bit off there, but I mean, pretty close, I think. So I'm happy. My year is off to a good start. I got lemonade out of lemons here. Um, as far as the rest of the roll cage, as you can see, I've tack welded my floor plates in after, of course, you know, putting them in a vise and hammering them and bending them to try to match the contour of the floorboard. Take a look at the seat here. This is the TMI Products 
seat that I had to take the upholstery off and get it down to the fiberglass core here. I had to do quite a bit of trimming along the back there to work around the wheel tubs and also here in the front corners where it comes up against the roll bar. Um, as you can see, I've trimmed it back and it's in there pretty good now. And the roll bar is looking sweet. Let me show you something else here that I got. This is from a company called Rampage Fabrications, I believe. And these little tube clamps here or couplers are a chrome molly steel piece, which was surprisingly hard to find. The NHRA rulebook kind of says inch and five eighths, um, 0.083 wall chrome molly tubing is sort of the minimum standard dimension, which for me, I want to add as little weight to the car as possible. But these inch and five eighths um, chrome molly tube couplers, what this will allow me to do is first of all, this goes inside your piece of tubing like this, and then you weld that side there, and then your other piece of tubing slips over this side and gets welded. And then what you've got is a removable interlocking joint that will allow me to, say for example, splice one right in there in, into this tubing and allow me to unbolt this from the chassis. Now, of course, that means to be able to unbolt it after I've got a you know eight point cage in there, I've got to put one of these at every junction point. So there's going to be one up there. There'll be one down here at the floor, you know, right there, right there, and in the back as well. And these were not cheap. They're about 50 bucks each. So I spent quite a bit of money to be able to make my roll cage removable. And what this does is, A, makes it removable in case, A, I just want to take the cage out of the car. B, it allows me to fully weld around all the joints here without having to get the torch, you know, like in there or worry about getting up on top here or trying to slip the headliner in after the fact. I can take all of this stuff out once I've mocked it up, weld these in all the way around, get a good weld, powder coat it, paint it, whatever, and put the headliner in the car, bolt this thing back in. So I, I think it's kind of a win-win-win situation here. They were not cheap but um, hopefully worth the effort and the expense. And I just gotta say, so far, I'm very happy with what's happening with the roll bar today. Now I'm also gonna put a brace in between these two posts here. So I'm gonna put a horizontal bar there, again, with a pair of couplers, because to be able to take any of this stuff out, there's gotta be a coupler down there, one over there, and one in the horizontal brace so that all of it can be disassembled and taken out of the car. Now one thing I am thinking about is if I were to have a couple of adult passengers back here say, guys my size, you know, the head is kind of precariously close to the roll bar here. So, you know, dudes with no helmets on, that's a, that's a potential headache right there. Um, I did, of course, try to accommodate that by moving this bar over as far this way as I could. Now we're getting into the bend part here, so that's as far as I can take it. Uh, but for the most part, I don't anticipate having passengers other than my kids, which are, you know, little kids right now. So I think so far this is really not a big deal. And once again, if it really was a big deal and I was, say, taking a road trip with, you know, a couple of my buddies or whatever, I could unbolt the bar and then bolt it back in later. I should also note that, as you can see here, I had to end up removing quite a bit of my package tray here. Uh, there was a little slotted area right here that I needed to open up and I'd already kind of messed up from a previous attempt and I had my speaker holes here so I just decided to screw it. I just cut the whole thing out. I wanted to leave a little bit of the material to keep a, uh, a brace there. But I'm gonna end up fabricating a whole new package tray here once this is all configured the way I want it. I'll measure in and cut the hole perfectly, hopefully, and then build a nice thing with some uh, bead rolled um, seams into it for structural support and we'll make it look sharp. Today's January 5th and I'm going to learn how to Teague weld if it kills me. Okay, for starters, I have sharpened my tungsten there, if you can see that or not, using the belt sander in my drill. Um, I am using ER70S-2 filler rod, 45 thousandths. This is 4130 chrome molly steel tubing that I've used my cutoff wheel, I'm sorry, my tubing notcher to make a nice little coping there. Cleaned everything off with a Scotch-Brite pad and acetone. I'm going to now reassemble my torch 
and uh, take another shot at this. All right, so this is my first attempt at Teague welding. Pretty shitty. <laughs> um, I kind of managed to complete a weld all the way around, but as you can see, it's nasty. I was starting and stopping. I probably had to stop and resharpen my uh, tungsten 12 times. Um, let's see if I can do that one better. Okay, day one of self-taught welding class. Um, I'm not thrilled with any of this stuff. I'll start with my first weld here, which is pretty shitty. Um, then we move on to that one. Slight improvement. Number three, I think, is a pretty big jump in quality of weld. And then number four, my last one there. What I found throughout the uh, process here was that... Um, I think I had my gas pressure turned up a little bit too high. By the way, I'm using a Lincoln LE31MP multi-process welder. It does, uh, it's what I've been using for all my MIG wire feed. And as you can see, I'm just getting started with the TIG process. I have ordered a new Everlast 210 EXT TIG welder, which I'm gonna use exclusively for TIG. And I'll use this strictly for MIG. That way I can set the two welders both up. I won't have to keep changing gas bottles back and forth. Okay, today is my first lesson in how to bend tubing. This is the JD Squared Model 32 tubing bender. Manual bend, there's no hydraulics, you gotta pull that lever, it's very difficult. <laughs> but it does, uh, you know, it does work. After doing quite a bit of prepping to get it installed on the bench here, I tried a couple of different attempts at drilling mounting holes and the first one put the entire bender up too close to the table and I couldn't get that uh, die and the degree wheel in there. So I ended up drilling two more holes to move it out further away from the table, which now it kind of hangs a little bit too far off the table. Um, I did purchase the pedestal stand that mounts the uh, tubing bender, but I'm not gonna drill anchors into my buddy's concrete floor. So we're using the outdoor table. And as long as we're outdoors, let's point out that it's raining out here. So I've been out here in the rain, which is just awesome. And uh, you know, Already got some surface rust on my brand new tubing bender, but hey, you know. So anyway, I've made my first a couple attempts at bending tube, and the idea is to make what they call a cheater pipe. A cheater pipe is like a gauge that tells you how much tubing you will use for a given bend. Um, in other words, these marks here on the outside represent inches of tubing, which I marked before I bent the tubing. And then as I bent each 10 degree increment, I would place a mark here on the outside edge to show how much material would be used over the course of a 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 degree bend. In the process of doing this, and this was a scrap piece of tubing that was not quite long enough, and it sort of slipped out of the die forming um, follower piece and bent the tubing. So I figured, well, all right, that's junk. I'll start over. This was the tubing that came from the Chris Alston's tubing kit. This other piece of tubing, which I just bent, um, came out better. However, you'll notice that it's sort of squashed the tubing a little bit. You can see that it's flattened there in the center of the bend. I'm not sure why. The only thing I can think of is I might have gotten some lubricant onto the die side of the tube, which is the inside of the curve. The follower side is the outside. It says do not lubricate the inside, but you can lubricate the outside so that it slides through the follower. Now, maybe I oversprayed it and I got some lubricant on this side, which caused the whole thing to move and caused it to kink. That's the only thing I can think of at this point. Or this tubing is junk. Uh, this is Summit brand chrome molly tubing. It's the same size, inch and five eighths, 083 wall thickness. So I don't know what the problem is, but I got two pieces of junk here, one that's smashed on this end and one that's flattened in the middle. Um, I don't know what to do. I'm gonna just proceed now using this as a gauge. And I've got a couple of pieces of tubing in there. Some of it is the Summit brand, some of it's the Chris Olsons. I'll try to find pieces that are just big enough to bend. And I'm gonna try to get to work. Okay, I'm still in the rain. <laughs> I made my first bend um, in this sidebar, which is the 50 degree bend right here. Okay, 50 degrees, and now I'm gonna make a 35 degree bend right there. Now, I'm still kind of guessing at this. I did some measurements. I got a digital angle finder here and made all these calculations here. 
calculated the distance of my bends, measured from point A to the beginning of the bend, and then from the end of the bend to the next beginning of the bend, and so on. Came up with something like that right there. So now I'm going to make this bend right here, which is also at a separate angle from the A pillar. You can see the A pillar kicks in about three degrees from this angle, which is not perpendicular either. So I'm doing a bit of guessing here, but I came up with a three degree difference. And if my calculations are correct, you're gonna see some serious shit. By tilting the bar up on this end, it should kink this in. Well, kink is not the right word, but bend this in and give me the correct angle. I'm gonna bend this to 35 degrees once I preload it and set my dial gauge to zero. I'm gonna bend to 35 degree and uh, go check the fit. Okay, it's my first attempt. With a tubing bender, um, it's not bad. <laughs> it's not completely fitted or anything like that. It's not even cut to length yet, so it's sticking above the bar here. But uh, it goes along the roof rail and comes down the A-pillar and my angles are not too far off. Um, I'm gonna call it a day because I'm wet and tired but I think I'm gonna come back and take another look at this and see if I wanna take another shot at it. I've got more tubing to play with. This was my first attempt. I'm not terribly disappointed. I got the angles pretty close. Um, I think ideally I would like this to be a little bit further forward. And as you can see, this angle, this bend here, is gonna drop down once I trim the length of this a little bit further and once this comes down to meet the main hoop. The only thing is, I don't know how much further this can come down before it starts poking its head underneath this trim here, which I don't want to do. I want it to be hidden behind the trim. I know there's a little bit of thickness of material and stuff here, so it can come down maybe half an inch or three quarters of an inch. So I'm going to come back, trim the ends, fit it in there as good as I can, and see if I'm happy enough with it. And if not, I'll bend another one. But my first attempt, it took all day to make a first attempt. But I'm going to end the day on a relatively good note and come back and start fresh. So I realize that's only a couple of things, but uh, it's been three weeks since my last update. And so I figured I better keep the updates moving along, even if there's not much progress or what seems like a lot of progress. For me, a lot has happened and it took a lot of trial and error and learning. And you know what? I'm going to get better at the Teague welding. I'm going to get that cage bent. I'm going to get it fitted weld it in, and then I'm gonna get back on the paint and get that thing painted and get it back in this garage where it belongs. So until the next episode, everybody, please take care of yourselves and thanks for tuning in. Subscribe if you haven't already. I'll see you on the next episode. Bye-bye.